talk to you about uh, some ground that I want to cover so let's go to the word of the Lord we praise the Lord for our <clears throat> streaming audience we thank God for the uh, subscribers and the people who uh, uh, have tuned in and caught hold and uh, some of the uh, most kind things have been said and I'm telling you saints there is a market for God's truth there's always somebody who will resist the truth, but you know what? There's always somebody who accepts the truth. And I thank God for being on the Lord's side. And there are people who are just simply saying, Amen. Now, that's the truth. I want to call your attention to Proverbs, chapter number 23. And tonight, I want to read uh, just one verse to you, uh, the 23rd verse of Proverbs chapter 23. That's that put a knife to your throat chapter that teaches you table manners when you're eating. Amen. Even if the man says to you, eat all of my dainties, he says, don't do it. Because he may be saying to you, eat it all, but He's hoping that you won't. And verse 7 says, So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But we're going to talk tonight from verse 23, which reads, as, And thank God for our praise team tonight and our music ministry. And thank God for these powerful, powerful workers who uh, record and these work the cameras and do all of the things that make up a room uh, happen. Amen. We, you, you can't do this without good people. Amen. Good people who are willing to work and make it happen. So I want you to come in as closely as possible and let's hear the word of the Lord. It says, verse 23, buy the truth, sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth, sell it not. Also buy wisdom and instruction and understanding. Tonight I want to talk from this subject, uh, recognizing, recognizing the value of God's truth. Recognizing the value of God's truth. It's amazing the trouble we get in and the problems we cause for our lives and the headaches that we bring and the heartache, the heartbreaks, the disappointments and all of the things that happen in, in the life of a human being uh, simply because they chose not to value God's truth. Decide that I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to take a stab at it. I'm going to try this, that, or the other. Or I'm going to get with her or get with him. In regards to what God, the Bible says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to drive over there. I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to hang out at this club. I'm going to do whatever. I'm not going to study. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. But, but the Bible says, that's why I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to do this. Um, um, and the things that happen to people because we turn a deaf ear to God's truth. So tonight I want to talk about recognizing the value of God's truth. It says, buy the truth. Buy. And once you've purchased it, whatever you do, don't sell it. Isn't that something? Amen. There's a transaction, but once you acquire it, keep it. Don't sell it. Don't separate from it. Don't part from it. Don't ignore it. Don't spit caution to the wind. 
and assume that it's not there to help you and to keep you and to make your life better, to get you to heaven, to make your life less complicated and to bless you. By the truth, sell it not. Teach us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, allow me to begin this teaching by saying our text describes both the positive and negative way of saying something. To say something both positively and negatively um, is a Hebrew method of of uh, adding emphasis. And uh, the, by the truth, it's positive. Sell it not, it's negative. It is emphasizing the enormous, incalculable value of that book that you have in your lap and the teachings of it. It's valuable. And if you get it, whatever you do, do not Part from it. Let it teach you how to be a mom. Let it teach you how to be a dad. Let it teach you how to be a good single person. It'll teach you how to be a married wife, a married husband. It'll teach you how to get blessed. It'll teach you how to get uh, prayer. Amen. Everything. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. The Bible says let if you're sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. The Bible says, he that will love life and see good days, let him dodge evil and uh, bridle his tongue, let it speak no guile. And the Bible tells you how to enjoy your sojourn here. The emphasis here is on God's truth. And the truth that I'm talking about, because there are various kinds of truth. The truth that I'm talking about tonight is that which is true for everyone, listen to this, everywhere and at all times and is not compatible with any opposing system of beliefs. A truth that is true for everyone, everywhere, at all times, and is not compatible with any opposing beliefs. God's truth is true for everyone, everywhere, all the time. That's what Jesus said about the Bible. Jesus said in John 17, and 17, the B clause, he said, thy word is truth. It's true for everyone, everywhere, at all times, and is not compatible with any opposing belief system. Absolute truth is that which is true at all times and in all places for every one. Whatever is true for one person is true for all persons when you're dealing with absolute truth because absolute truth doesn't change. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then he said this, no man Cometh to the Father, but by me. He says, I'm the way for all people at all times, everywhere. And you can't, and I'm not compatible with any opposing doctrine. I'm the truth for all people, everywhere, all the time. And you cannot compare me with any opposing doctrine. I'm the life for all people, everywhere, at all times. And the life that I want to give you is not compatible with any opposing 
doctrine. So that's grand. But, but Bishop, what about in Muslim countries? And, and what about in uh, Indonesian countries? And what about in Hindu countries? And what about in all people? Everywhere. At all times. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus claimed to be. See, the Christian, you got to understand, we're not, we're not in, uh, Jesus didn't come to be the way, truth, and the life for Christians. You won't find that in the Bible. He's not the way, the truth, and the life for Christians. He said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. So I'm the way, the truth, and the life for all people, everywhere, at all times. Praise the Lord. Now, if you accept me, that makes you a Christian. That's how you become a believer. You accept me. Well, what if you don't accept me? That, then he's claiming there is no other way for any people, anywhere else, at any other time. And if they have accepted a way, that is a, an opposing system. That is not true. See, you can't you lose a loved one, your loved one's a Muslim or Jehovah's Witness or some, uh, something other than a born-again Christian. You can't try to put them in heaven now. But, you know, they, they might not have served the Lord the way we did, but they did it that way. I am the way, the truth, and the life for all people, every way. At all times, and I'm not compatible with any other belief system. Well, Bishop, I don't know if I believe that. To be a Christian, you got to believe it. Do you know you can't you can't be a follower of Christ and disagree with Christ's doctrine? You can't claim to be a follower of, of Christ and then and then do not believe or you haven't accepted the claims that Jesus makes for himself. How are you going to do that? Praise the Lord. Now think about it. You can't, you can't hardly be that and be a member here. I'm the pastor. <laughs> now you sitting there saying to yourself, no, I'm the pastor. No, no, no. It ain't going to work. Where you work, there is order. There is regimentation. And you are whatever they've hired you to be, but, uh, but if you're not uh, 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 the, the CEO or, or whatever, if you have someone uh, who is uh, over you, you can't, you can't just disregard their position, disregard their claim, and expect to continue to work there. Well, I don't care what they say. They say I, I, don't, I don't go by that. Well, they're going to show you the door. Security? Come get this person and, and send them on their way. Jesus is absolute truth. He's true for all people, everywhere, at all times. Amen. And our doctrine is not compatible with any opposing belief system. I like including that because, see, that, 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 that tells you these, uh, these churches that's trying to mix that church. You, you mix in your church with Greek life. You mix in your church with uh, Masons, and you mix in in your church with Eastern stars. You got these uh, opposing belief systems. Jesus is not Lord in the Eastern star doctrine. Jesus is not Lord in the book of of the of, Mace, of the Masons. He's not Lord uh, amongst the Mormons. Praise Lord. He's not Lord in the Kappa doctrine. That's not why it was founded. It wasn't started. Praise the Lord. When founded to obey, obey Jesus, follow Jesus, well, they do many good, good community works. A whole lot of people do good community works. There are atheists who do community works. But we're talking about going to heaven and serving the Lord now. And we're talking about whether or not absolute truth is compatible with opposing belief systems. The truth is, it is not. 
Somebody said, well, what about that scripture where Jesus says, other sheep I have that are not of this fold? I have no problem with that at all. He, he said, other sheep I have. So what's your point? He said, other sheep I have. As long as they're Jesus' sheep. Aren't you Jesus' sheep? Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, you want to see other sheep Jesus have? Just look around. Everyone in here who's saved is a part of Jesus. And there are people in other churches, other denominations, who are saved and love the Lord. If they're reading their Bibles, if, now if they're reading their Bibles, they're not saved if they're going by the Book of Mormon. Because that is an opposing belief system. They're not saved through if they're reading the Holy Scriptures of the Jehovah's Witness. That's an opposing belief system. The Jehovah's Witness exists to defend and and to to uh, to defend and to uh, get revenge, uh, restitution for the name Jehovah. I guess they didn't read that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How does God, how do, how does God the Father feel about Jesus' Lordship? It's to the glory of God the Father. It glorifies God the Father. Somebody need to tell Jehovah's Witness. It glorifies God the Father. He's happy about that. You want to make God the Father mad, ha happy? Just love Jesus. You want to make God the Father mad? Cross Jesus. No man, Jesus says, coming to the Father but by me. Now, there is other truth. There's, there's a relative truth. I'll give you a relative statement. This glass is on the right side of this podium. And that's true, but it's relatively true. It's on the right side if you're standing behind the podium and you're right here. But depends on where you are, it's on the left side. It's relative. It's relative. There are some relative things. But I'm not, I'm not talking about relative. I'm talking tonight, I'm talking about overarching truth. You all don't like what I'm saying. Relative truth, uh, some truths are time bound. Time bound. Relative truth. A good time bound all true statement is that President Obama is president. That was true from 2008 to 2014. Is that right? But it's time bound. It's not true now. But it was a perfectly true statement for a set period of time. Now, on the other hand, there are some absolute statements that's true all the time, such as Jesus Christ, the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. See, that's not time bound. Praise the Lord. True to all people, all the time, in all places, and not compatible with any other opposing belief system. And this is why the Hebrew writer, you know, when he says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, uh, today, and, and forever, let me, let me show you something. And notice what he says, that's, that's, that's Hebrews 13 and verse 8. He goes on to say in verse 9, the very first, very first clause of verse 9 says, Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. It says Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then there's no point in you getting caught up. And whatever the latest little fad is that's going through, whether it's... Uh, uh, the Israelites or whatever, the, the, these movements that people get caught up in. One of the things I'm proud of uh, in our church, Upper Room is not a faddish church. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, we don't get caught up in whatever. As a church now, you may, you may have some individuals in here who, who are as faddish as, as all get out. If that's the way you want to be, then that's up to you. But you, your church isn't. Because part of what makes a church strong is its ability to not get caught up in the world and not to be uh, moved about with every wind and doctrine by the slight of men, whereby Paul says they lie in wait to deceive. Said in Ephesians, you, that you henceforth no longer be carried about with every wind and doctrine. It's not the will of God. 
for us to get every, whatever the flavor of the month is, that's what we're doing. Whatever the word, the, 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 uh, the, the buzz word is, the catchphrase, that's what we're doing now to show that we're with it and we're, we're, we're woke and we're, we're up to date, we're hip. No, buy God's truth. God's truth and sell it not. Um, uh, one of the uh, accusations about believers is that we are, we are accused, and I've been called this so many times, saints, and I imagine you've been since you attend here. Um, you know, you have to really love this church to be a member. You can be a member of most churches in Raleigh and people not say anything, one way or the other. You tell me, I, I go to the upper room, it's a reaction. It's a reaction, good, bad, or indifferent, you know. Either I love Wooden, <laughs> well, I hate Wooten, you know. And then there's someone else that's been gone. They, are you still there? They, they ain't got no joy. They want to come back. But, you know, they follow the losers, went on out there and got in trouble. And sometimes pride, pride won't live. I want to say to you, come on back. All we're going to do is embrace you. Down there somewhere in Lodi Bar, pride won't let you come back. Amen. But you let pride talk you into leaving. You don't like that, do you? So often they, they call us uh, closed-minded. But let me, I want to read something to you that I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, the, the name of this is, You Christians are so closed-minded. Open-mindedness has become a self-evident virtue in our society. As a matter of fact, when I was studying this, I actually sent this particular, what I'm reading to you tonight, to a friend of mine uh, in um, um, the, 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 the uh, state of Michigan who, uh, uh, in a nice way, but they accused me of just being, said I'm just, I'm too close-minded. I'm not, I'm, I'm close-minded, said he's, you need to be more open-minded. And so um, I, I read this. I said, I'm going to send this to my friend in the Lord because um, we're not, we're not cl closed-minded, in my opinion, where we shouldn't be closed-minded. Because I believe that there are some things you ought to be closed-minded about. I believe that if you are open-minded towards some things, you're walking in disobedience. Such as the inerrancy of Scripture. The truth of God's Word. You know what? I'm closed-minded. There is nothing in me. I leave no area in my thinking that the Bible isn't true. Now, one of the reasons I'm like this is I had a closed-minded pastor. Elder Turner set us down. This is one of the reasons why I had an 8 o'clock class and different things. You don't know where I got that from. Him set us down and taught us the word. Now, you know, he could preach with all get out. But what, what a lot of people didn't get a chance to experience was just his ability to just lay that word out there and make you love it. I mean, the body, you're sitting there, it's like cake and ice cream. Like you, you hate it, mother, you hate it when the lessons would end. And he taught us to love the word, love the hyphens, the commas, the colons and the semicolons of the Bible, everything about the Bible. The stuff, the, the, the stuff that I, until he taught me, thought was the boring part. He said, no, son, young man, there's nothing boring about this. And then you, you grow to just love it, and, and you lock in. So let me read this. It says, one open-mindedness mind, open has become a self-evident virtue in our society and a closed mind a sign of ignorance and depravity. However, this thinking is based on half-truths. Surely, it is good to admit 
the possibility that one might be wrong and never good to maintain a position no matter what the evidence is against it. Also, one should never make a firm decision without examining all the evidence without prejudice. That is the half-truth that ropes us into this view. See, when you fail to examine evidence without prejudice, that is what ropes you into believing that you should always be open-minded. See, It says, uh, let me go on and read, it says, um, that is the half-truth that ropes us into this view, but a half-truth is a whole lie. Are we still to remain open-minded when all reasons say that there can be only one conclusion? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you open tonight, saints, uh, to the fact? Are you open to the possibility that God didn't raise Jesus from the dead? I'm close to that. There's no body. There's no remains. Praise the Lord. All of the evidence show that Jesus rose again. Are you open? Are you open to the possibility that Jesus uh, didn't die on the cross or that Jesus never lived at all? Are you open to that? Are you open tonight to the possibility that there's no such thing to, uh, as the baptism in the Holy Ghost? I'm close to that, those kind of things. See, so be careful. Be careful when you boast. I'm open. I got to open my. Don't let it be open all the time. And to everything. Some things you got to shut down. Y'all don't like me tonight. Praise the Lord. Uh, in fact, in fact, openness is, as a doctrine now, the most closed-minded position of all. Because it eliminates any absolute view from consideration. See, when pe even when people, and we studied this in our 8 o'clock class, when people make statements that there's no such thing as absolute truth, they've just made an absolute statement. They just made an absolute claim. When you say there's no such thing as absolute truth, that statement is an absolute claim. So you just contradicted yourself. What if the view, the, what if the absolute view is true? Isn't openness taken to be an absolute? In the long run, openness cannot really be true unless it is open to some real absolutes that cannot be denied. Open-mindedness should not be confused with empty-mindedness. One should never remain open to a second alternative when only one can be true. When skeptics ask uh, Brooks and Jessler, now, speaking of uh, one never being open to an alternative when only one can be true, let me read some things that we should not be open to. Show you how the devil's trying to mess with our minds. See? And you can apply this to everything. Amen. I'm going to give you some absolutes. Genesis chapter number 1, verse 27. For time's sake, I'll just read it. Someone told me the other day, they said, Pastor, sometimes we get lost because you, you, you go so fast. Well, I have a very little time. Plus, since everything now is posted and it's out there, you can go over and pull it up again and go over the whole sermon. So I, 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 I'm trying to get it in because I know, you know you're ready to go after a certain hour. So Genesis uh, chapter 1 and verse 27, I want to give you something that's absolute, uh, something that 
It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now I got a, I got a question. Is that not absolute truth? Or are you open to the possibility that there may be a a, a third gender, a fourth gender, a two hundredth gender, or are you close to the point that you just believe what the Bible says? Genesis chapter number five, verse one and two says, "This is the book of the generations of Adam in the day." that God made man. In the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam, the human race, in the day when they were created. I'm close to that. I'm close. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 4. Jesus is talking, and he says, and he answered and said unto them, have you not read that which, uh, that he which made them in the beginning made them male and female? Notice I have to drive home this point, intentionally uh, reached out and grabbed a male-female construct. Why? Because this is one of the pillars, one of the absolute truths in society now that is being challenged. And if we fold on this one, we'll fold on all of them. So I'm, I'm smart enough to see it. I must see, I told you, it. I'm a, I must see it. I see things. And I know sometimes you all wish that I would spend more time, to quote Bishop Willard, on hot dog sermons. But that's not what the Lord showed me. The Lord showed me, I see how the devil is gunning for your mind. And I preach that God will bring you out. You know that. We see God bring us out all the time. But the battle is for your mind. And for your, your, your the, the battle, the, the true battle is your belief system. Where the place that that book in your lap holds down in your soul. Not the place that it holds in you while you're sitting in here with us. Because while we, uh, you know, all of us in here together, you're almost scared not to say amen. But when you're by yourself, when you're challenged at work, when you're in the classroom, when you're at home uh, visiting loved ones, when you're out in the street, as you watch t uh, TV, as you see commercials and all this stuff, we're, we're being, God is being challenged. We're in a day where a man, now one thing about uh, Buddha Judge, Buddha Judge ain't trying to fool nobody. Buddha Judge talks about his husband at every stop. Now, did you ever believe that a man, a man, a man could be married to a man? By the way, he said the other day, uh, the pre this president thinks that we're a bunch of suckers. I thought that was an unusual um, choice of words. But anyway, a man could be married to a man. Y'all don't hear me. I just, I'm just saying what the man said. What's wrong with y'all? I said what the man said. A man could be married to a man and get crowds. And I, I, I look at the girls taking pictures of him, and they're just so dreamy-eyed. And I want to tell them young ladies, he think you stink. What are you, what you doing? What you doing? Taking a selfie with a man. If a man marries a man, what is that telling you, woman, about what he think of you? You don't have anything he wants. Nothing. Nothing. And there you go grinning. And you notice, you notice, 
uh, don't want nobody will bring that up. No, even as his opponents, they call they won't bring that up. I bring it up because I understand what they are what the devil is doing in this. He's trying to get you to doubt this book in its major areas. Because if you cave on foundational issues, you will cave if they ask you to take the mark of the beast. Oh, oh, you'll, you'll, we'll cave. We'll cave. Some of us done caved already. We will cave because we don't have any stand up in us. The devil systematically took us apart. He convinced us that I have my truth, you have your truth, he has her truth, and she has her truth, and everybody's truths are equal. And then God has his truth, but, but I can disagree with God and have my own truth. Oh, see, in that, you've been destroyed. See, because at that point, there's no arbiter. For the believer, the Bible is the arbiter. It is the thing. On which we weigh everything. Is what we compare all ideologies to. When you're going through. When you're going through. You ought to turn to the Bible. When you're going through sickness. You ought to thank scripture. When you're going through lust. When you're going through marital problems. When you're dealing with boredom. When you're dealing with depression. Whatever you're dealing with. God wants you to learn to thank scripture first. Mothers, the truth is now sometimes we think scripture lasts. We used to sing a song. You know, El Turner was brave. He was way ahead of his time. And y'all think I pay attention. I, I'm, a, I'm a pipsqueak. We used to sing, when you tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. El Turner got up and said, that's not a good song to sing. You tried everything and everything. Why? He said, why are you going to save Jesus for last? You save yourself a whole lot of trouble if you try him first. I said, my God, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do you know what kind of shape you're in after you've tried everything? And everything is fair. What's left of you is to, to try Jesus? He, you ain't give him nothing to work with. Everybody, everybody say, God... Try him first. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, this is absolute truth. The absolute truth is when God made the human race, God made the human race with only two sexes. Male and female. But pastor, what about those people that's born with two sexes? No one's born with two sexes. Uh, that, 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 nobody's born with two sexes. People are either male or they're female. People may have abnormalities with organs. So I got you thinking. That's, that's Bible study. But people aren't born with two sexes. God, God didn't make a he, she. That's why I never, you know, that's why I ne I've never taught that, you know, when God made these guys, you know, when God made uh, Eve, the woman ain't nothing but a man with a woman. Preachers preached that one time. No, I told him, I said, man, maybe you married a man with a woman. I told him I didn't marry a man with anything. Not Patrick Wooden. Patrick Wooden married a woman. That ain't no man with no wound. That's a woman. Now, now you might have married. Brothers, if you're going to call your wife a man with a wound, have at it. Say amen. Look at that Parker back there. <laughs> oh, yeah, think about it. But now, I, I understand you ask about the amorphodites. You know, they've changed that name now. We're in a day, we're, we're in a day of labels. 
It's not what a thing is anymore. It's what you call it. The new name for hermaphrodites is intersex. Intersex. Um, now about one in 1,000 babies, according to a, uh, a study, um, a researcher at Istanbul University in Turkey, said that one in 1,000 babies are born with a physical anomaly called intersex. I'm off a diet. It's a physical abnormality. A physical abnormality. An anomaly, an abnormality. Something that is different from what is normal. It is a physical abnormality. It is not a spiritual abnormality. It is not a new gender. It is a physical abnormality. Praise the Lord. People are born with one foot. People are born with one arm. People are born with lower parts of their bodies missing. They are still either male or female. They don't fit into any other category. Still male, y'all don't hear me, or female. Now this this is according this is according to Friday, um, May the third, two thousand and nineteen. So it's recent uh, case uh, case in which a newborn's genitalia is what Robert. Uh, Perdith said, I probably missed that, missed that name. Don't feel bad, Robert. They mess up mine. Um, cases in which a newborn's genitalia, genitals, make it unclear whether the child is a boy or a girl. May be more common than once believed, according to researchers. One example of what's known as an ambiguous genitalia is a baby girl with an enlarged clitoris that looks more like a small penis, the study uh, says. In some cases, it's infants. Infants have external sex organs that do not match their internal reproductive organs. For example, a female infant can have an external sex organ that resembles male's, male genitals, but have the typical internal female organs, ovaries and a uterus. That is a physical abnormality. In these so-called intersex amorphodites cases, look at this, treatment may be delayed until puberty or adulthood so that the parents and the doctors can, can, can make shared decisions according to the studies. Author, they can decide what to do as time go on. Just watch the baby. Let the child grow. Love your child. Let the child grow. The child will tell you what type of correction, what needs to be done. That's a physical abnormality. We live in a fallen world. We live in a sin-cursed world. We live in a world where uh, because of wickedness, all kinds of things happen. And then there are, there are, there are um, other birth defects that children have. One in, in 33 infants are born in the United States. Of course, this is a 2017 study with a birth defect. And contributing factors are lack of folic, folic acid, drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, using drugs, 
medications, infections, obesity, or out of control diabetes, exposure to things in the environment, all of these things can lead to a physical abnormality in the child. Are you following? But none of these things change the absolute truth of the scripture that God made them, male and female. Are you following me? See, I'm taking you somewhere. See, because you got to, uh, as believers, uh, and see the young folk, they really listen to this. Uh, some, of the, some, of the, some of the older saints, they, well, why don't you move on? And, and cause we, we, we know that. And don't, don't, don't nobody talk about that. Nobody in your world. But in their world, they talk about it all the time. In, in their world, their buddy, old John, whom they've known for years of John, showed up uh, the other day and decided to be called Jackie. And they don't know what to do. See, that's in their world. The world of maybe an older person or a senior citizen, you may not see these things. And everybody's got to be equipped. They got to be armed with something to come back with. And that's my job. As your leader. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me just finish just a little bit of this study and we're going to move on. For that study, uh, back in this uh, study by uh, Dr. Uh, Adkin, Adden, uh, this Istanbul University in Turkey. For their study, the researchers analyzed data on nearly 14,200 newborns. Of those, 18 of the 14,200, 18 had ambiguous genitalia. That is a rate of 1.3 in 1,000 births much higher than the rate of um, the rate of one in 4,500 to 5,500 reported in previous studies. So it seems that there may be uh, a growth in this, but I've given you factors that can lead to it. Preeclampsia leads to a lot of birth defects and uh, these uh, anomalies with children. So if you're pregnant, you want to make sure you keep your blood pressure. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I'm telling you, you want to keep your blood pressure down. Don't, don't ignore your blood pressure. If you have blood pressure problems, I don't understand anybody with blood pressure problems, and you just still just love all the pork you can love and all that kind of stuff. You just chew it down, chop it down, and all that. Listen, don't, you ought to want to live. That, that high blood pressure is, high, is bad on your kidneys. It, it can shut you down. You ain't got to say, man, I know, I know you got that pot, pork chop waiting, uh, waiting for you on the stove when you get home. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you we're eating ourselves into an early grave. If a thing don't work for you, you ought not to eat it. Praise the Lord. And if you got certain problems, you got certain problems going on, certain problems ought to say to stay away from certain things. That's just, that's just good old discipline. Praise the Lord. That's the weakest amen I got tonight. <laughs> amen. That's the weakest one. But these, these babies that, that are born with this condition, they tend to be smaller. Uh, they, they, they tend to uh, have a lower birth weight. Um, investigators found, in addition to uh, preeclampsia, if I'm saying that right, um, and uh, pregnancy complications uh, like high blood pressure and other things like that are common in these things that lead to these abnormalities. But none of these things change the fact that God got it right. Now, we are living in a day where people are asking you to join into an argument that you ought not join into. See, I'm not, I, I, I'll argue with Sister Wooden. 
I can, I'll chop it up with friends. And go back and forth on some things. Some fights that may not concern me, if it's a worthy call, I might jump in it. But I'm no fool. Some fights, Patrick Wooden don't get in. Well, what, what, are you, what are you headed? I don't argue with God. Now, where are you headed with that? Isaiah 45. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 9 and 10 says, Woe unto him that strive with his maker. Oh, I'm in the Bible now. Wow unto him that strive with his maker. Woe means impending doom. Says, let the potsherds uh, strive with the potsherds. See, let the clay pots argue with the clay pots. It says, shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, what makest thou? Or thy work, uh, he has no hands. Woe unto him that saith to his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, to his mother, What hast thou brought forth? Now, people today are arguing with God. And they want you to join in on it. They're getting around here. A man is, will call himself a woman. Oh, yeah. Arguing with God. I'm in the wrong body. I am transgender. You are striving with your maker. And what do you mean, Christian? Well, you know, I kind of I, I understand what they're saying. Well, now, 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 well, in that case, then, you're not as close in your thinking. Oh, I'm teaching good tonight. I'm, I'm driving it home. I'm driving it home. I'm, I'm, I'm litigating. You're not as close in your thinking as you say you are if you're open to arguing with your maker. Now, 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 check this out. The context of this scripture was Israel arguing because God chose wicked Cyrus to bring them out. <laughs> God ain't never used no wicked man to do nothing. God ain't never used no cussing man. God ain't, he used Cyrus. And our, uh, if God Chooses somebody. Wow, be unto him who argues with his maker. So be careful now. Don't get on the wrong side of God. But now back to this. These people are arguing. The point of Isaiah 45, 9 through 10 is that it is absurd to, for a son uh, to say to his dad, what are you fathering? Or say to his mother, what have you given birth to? Amen. The point is that a baby does not question his birth any more than a pot questions its creation. Now children are questioning their creation. On the uh, Ellen DeGeneres show, Dwayne Wade was on there. I got to bring it up. Anytime you make it public, it's fair game. I found out that people want, people want privacy when they want privacy. But when they want to come out public and say something, then they don't want you to say anything. Or if you say something to people, well, that ain't your business. Well, it's, if it's on television, it's everybody's business. It's everybody's business who saw it or read about it. Because you know why it is? Because you put it out there. 
But see, everybody is not that messed up audience that Ellen uh, attracts. Sanctified folk hear about stuff. Sanctified preachers who have an opinion. And then especially if you then say, I'm going to use this to further an agenda that is against God. So then should the church say nothing? Pretend that it didn't happen because he's a famous basketball player and married a famous movie star? Praise the Lord. Now, this is what happened. You saw the show. I heard about it and read. I don't watch Ellen. But it says, on the Ellen DeGeneres show, Dwayne Wade opened up about his 12-year-old, now the article says 12-year-old daughter. He opened up about his 12-year-old son. Now, if you call her a daughter, you're lying. Or you got that open mind in areas where it ought not to be open. Now, open it where it ought to be open. But you don't open it where it ought not to be open. Because I've told you, God didn't make but two, two sexes. God made them male. And he made them female. Pastor, move on. You, you're going too slow. I got to go slow. Because it's so easy to be misunderstood. So I got to walk you through this. And, uh, and th this is good Bible study. So he, he says, opened up about his 12-year-old son. Amen. He tells how the child, how the child's coming out transformed him as a parent. Now, I can spend the rest of the night talking about this statement because the last time I checked, the job of the parent was to transform the child. Am I right, parents? Let me, let me hear those who raise children say amen. See, children, I mean, this, and it, man, let me tell you, the tail is wagging the dog. How tall is Dwayne? How tall is he? Six, 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 six man talking about how a child transformed him. A 12 year old. Cause we heard that from somebody else in the White House. Says, I didn't believe in same sex marriage till I talked to my children. What? A I mean, come on now. Come on now. I I've never formed any doctrine by talking to Crystal and Junior. But they formed most of their doctrine talking to me and their mother. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. You know what it says? That scripture, train up a child in the way it should go. That scripture is written to parents. There's no Bible that says, child, train up the parent. There's no Bible for that. Amen. There's no Bible for that. So, it said the child transformed him as a parent. I was under the impression that it was supposed to work. Uh, now, that's me, my only note <laughs> to myself. <laughs> so let me get back. <laughs> See, Patricia didn't do that right. Let me get back here. So the child came out, and he was transformed. And the child says, the child's name uh, is Zaya. Z-A-Y-A. 12-year-old came home, originally named Zion. Zion, this is according to the story, born as a boy. That's not true. Zion was not born as a boy. There's not a man in here who was born as a boy. You was born a boy. Ain't no ass in it. Boy. Male, ain't no ass. Praise the Lord. Like you in disguise. Like you. you. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Ain't no born ass. You born a boy. The girl born a girl. My, my, my granddaughter was a girl. A, a girl when she was born. 
My daughter was a girl when she was born. My son was a boy. He wasn't born as no boy. He was a boy. Notice how the world slips that stuff in there like it's interchangeable. God made them. And what you got to do with the truth? Buy the truth. Sell it not. Now, I'm not, going to, I'm, I'm not here tonight to, to attack a 12-year-old. That's not my point. But I want to show you how the world is working on us. Came as a boy. Came home and said, hey. So I want to talk to you guys. Talk to his parents. So I want to talk to you guys. I think going forward, as a 12-year-old, I'm ready to live my truth. Let me, I want to give you a word to the wise. If we're ever talking, whatever we're conversating about, don't say to me, well, Pastor, that's my truth. Pastor, that's your truth. When I get through rebuking you, I'm going to light you up because you're letting the world. That's the world. That's the world. That's the world. There ain't no six, eight million truths in this world. Praise the Lord. So I'm ready to live my truth, which the truth is the boy is ready to lie. Got to be. Because if he's beginning to claim that he's a girl, that's a lie. And, and that's what dad should have said. So I'm, I'm ready to live my truth. And I want to be referenced as she and her. I'd love for you guys to call me Zaya Wade recalls. Well, Pastor, what would you have done? Well, when a child would have woke up next month from that coma, they would have been delivered. Come to this, call you what? Yeah, by the time they come to their senses, oh yeah, I would have done it in Jesus' name because I love them. A few years ago, this would have been considered child abuse. Child abuse, and it is. The new name was the easy part. Wade said he and his wife, Gabrielle Union, now listen to this, set out to educate themselves about the other aspects of supporting Zaya in whatever, look at the lie, she needed. That's a boy. So now the parents... Look at this. This is a quote. That's our job, to go and get information, to reach out to every relationship we have. Look at this. My wife reached out to everybody on the cast of Pose, P-O-S-E, Wade said, referring to the FX series about uh, New York City's ball culture in the 19... 80s and the 1990s. So where his wife went was to people doing a play. A play. A movie about transgenders and freaks. She goes to them. That's why she goes. She, they don't call me. They don't call the pastor. They don't, they don't turn to a doctor like uh, Dr. McHugh of uh, of uh, 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 St. John's Hospital, who stopped performing transgender operations. Uh, not, uh, yeah, Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital. And you know what he said? He says, transgender men do not become women no, after the operation, nor do transgendered women become men. 
all, including Bruce Jenner, that's, I'm reading, it's a quote, become feminized men and masculinized women. They become counterfeits or imposters of the sex which they identify. In that lies their problematic culture. And in areas like Sweden, where they are considered to be transgender friendly and where they treat it like it is nothing, the suicide rate is still 20% higher than that of the natural, uh, the rest of the population. You know why? Because it's a demon. And the worst thing you can do is then take a person who is obviously psychotic and going through, who needs love, attention, and correction, the worst thing you can do is then begin to play the game. Had he called me, I would have said, Brother Wade, love your son and embrace that boy and tell him, young man, you can't argue with your maker. God made you a boy. We'll work through these other things. We'll be patient with you. We'll stand by. We ain't going to put you out. But don't argue with your maker. You'll lose that argument. God made you a boy. You will never in your life be a girl. You won't be a girl in this life, nor in the life to come. That's not possible. Praise the Lord. And now with me personally, I believe that the creator got it right. How many of you believe that the creator got it right when he made you the way that he made you? I, mean, I, ain't, got, I ain't got no argument, uh, no arguments about that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So they went and they went to poll. She, she went to a play, went to uh, a movie set. It, I'd be ashamed to tell that. We just try to figure out as much information as we can to make sure that we give our child the best opportunity to be got her best self. Now, I got to wrap this up. My time's running out, and, and I haven't given it all to you. But I want to quote, read a quote from Zion. Zion, a.k.a. Zaya, Z-A-Y, Zaya. You have to, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> but I want to read a quote. I want to read a quote. And, and, and you know what she does? He, see that? I want to make sure you're listening. He makes my point. He preaches my entire presentation tonight. He says this, quote, be true to yourself. What's the point of being on this earth if you're not going to try to be some, if you're going to try to be someone you're not. Let me start over again. Be true to yourself. What's the point of being on this earth if you're going to try to be someone you're not? It's like you're not even living as yourself. End of quote. And that's the point. Zion, when you try to live as Zaya, you're not living as yourself. You are a boy. You're not being true to yourself. This is actively in, this is how you argue with your maker. Your maker made you a boy. The rest of the world is trying to get us. And, and people ask, get us to buy this stuff. Pastor, why do you talk about this so much? Because they're talking about it so much. But the way they talk about it, they talk about it in movies, in plays, in dramas, in commercials. It's all around you. It's designed to get you almost without notice to believe. I pray that we, that men, brothers in the church, buy the scriptures. Yes. It's the time for all the brothers to grow up. Amen. See, some of them making flunky mistakes. 
You're always messing up. You're always messing up. I, I asked the other day in the men's meeting, I said, why is it that brothers always, uh, many brothers always, many brothers, many brothers throw their life away? Why do so many brothers do that? And while I was talking, uh, one of the brothers, he had one of them apple, got one of them things. Uh, I, I, I don't wear that. I wear a watch. Uh, he got one of them apple watches. And you know, when I asked the question, do you know that his watch spoke up and said, I'm trying to find the answer to that. Am I right? For, am I right, brother? Did I make that up? For the men who were in there, how many heard that? See, you know what that means? That means they're listening. So, in case you're listening, God's truth is true to all people, everywhere, all times, in every place. God's truth has never not been true. And what did he tell us to do with this truth? He said, buy it. That is, you put forth every effort you can to learn it. Then once you learn it, you live it. You apply it. Go home and be a Bible husband. Young man, be, be, don't act like you hadn't been told. Go home and be a Bible wife. Be a Bible young lady. Don't behave like you haven't heard it. Some people ever learning, but never able. You're going to mess up one time too many. And the, and the train is going to leave the station, and it ain't going to come back. It ain't coming back. And you're going to be lost. You're going to lose everything. And then you'll wish to God that you had not. Everybody's standing. I've run out of time. I've run out of time. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't run out of scripture. Hallelujah. God's truth is worth the price. A little time we ran over tonight. It's worth the price. Just to get it. Amen. And, and, and this is applicable in every area, in every area, in every area, in every area of life where God's truth carries, Kyla, is being challenged, you hold to God's truth. You young people, y'all hold to God's truth. You young folk in high school and stuff, you're, you're becoming an increasing, uh, a shrinking my minority. The whole world around you is changing right before your eyes. But as it changes, just remember, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. And Jesus Christ and the teachings of Christ will never, never let you down. Jesus never fails. I said Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away but Jesus never never fails Father we praise you for your word tonight we're buying this Lord we buy this and not only do we buy it but we're not going to sell it we're just like the five wise virgins who said to the foolish who ran out of oil. The foolish said to them, give us some of your oil. The five wise said, no. Go to them that sell. Because see, if we give you some of ours, we might run out. Hallelujah. So I'm buying this stuff. And I'm not selling any of it. I'm not going to sell out not giving in to the devil but we believe the Bible is the word of God and Lord we trust you in, in these areas and every other area shape us now Lord shape us tonight shape us shape us God's truth will not conform to us we must conform to God's truth Shape us and make us who and what you'd have us to be.
God, I pray for Dwayne Wade. I pray for Gabriel Union. I, I pray for Zion and all of the other Zions out there. All the little boys and girls, the men and women, those whom the enemy has attacked. And not just with this transgender. God, the enemy is coming against our homes and coming against our marriages. And, oh, God. Oh, God. The devil is attacking. But God, you're moving by your spirit. And your word is right. Your word is right. Your word is right. We hold to your word. Tonight in the name of Jesus. Now Father may the word sink deep in our hearts. Heal the sick that are amongst us tonight. Those who are going through problems. Some of the things have nothing to do with what I said tonight. And yet they sat and took the word in. And I hear the Lord saying. When you take in what I'm saying, I'll fix what you're thinking. glory. You may come with a worry. And whether that word address that worry directly or not, if you take in what God says, that means he's fixing whatever that thing is. Because God knows in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I take my seat, before I take my seat, brother technician, you all put that picture on the, on the seat. Now, this is why, look at Gabriel running. Look at what they're doing to Zion. That's a disgrace. The, the little dark-skinned boy, is that the, yeah, am I right? And that's Gabriel. Is that, is, that, is that what it is? I couldn't tell with all that hair. They're doing this. They're letting this boy, Zion, at 12. Shows he's Dwayne Wade's boy. He's going to end up being 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and messed up like that. that see, when you see it, now you understand. And, and what the little boy don't even know that he's doing. The mama ought to know. But she's a dummy. If you, if you turn into a pose. That is what it looks like. When you argue. With your maker. Don't argue. With God. Be who the Lord. Made you. God bless you.